Hello everyone and welcome to Cybertech 2024. I'm excited to be here today talking about the future of cyberspace. My name is Omer Grossman and I'm the CIO at CyberArk. But before CyberArk, I was in the IDF for 25 years. My last two leadership positions were heading the biggest cloud service provider unit in the military, also known as Mamram. And as the head of operation in the cyber defense division, I was practically the IDF CISO. I leave it for you to decide in which picture I look more tired. 2022 was the last year I was in uniform, that is up until last October, when together with my friends and colleagues, I was called on reserve duty. On that note, I want to extend my appreciation to all the foreign delegations that are here with us today. We don't take your solidarity and support for granted, so thank you. <laughs> Let's start. With an increase in identity, new identities, and I'll circle back to that in a few minutes, the shaping of new environments due to new regulations and geopolitical tensions, and new attack methods, mostly related to Gen AI, we all still must solve the same challenge, securing cyberspace. Without data, you're just another person with an opinion. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this quote, and I'll share some slides with data in the next few minutes. However, without an opinion, you're just another person with data, and I will share my opinion with you as well. Now, I'd like you to close your eyes and try to imagine what cyberspace will look like five years from now. Will it look like, like Blade Runner dystopian future or a more secure and organized world? Ask yourself, what kind of a future do you want to be a part of? For those of you who actually did close their eyes, please open them and join me back here in 2023. 2024, sorry, let's start with some data. Breaches and ransomware attacks are at an all-time high and continue to impact the organization's security posture. Billions of dollars are at stake in this attack, and we already see $10 million bounty on hackers' head. Many of the attackers are posted all over the world, and some of them in countries that we just can't get to, making finding them and prosecuting them a much more difficult task. 90% of the organizations expected, so experienced at least one identity-related incident during last year. Along with ransomware, identity-related incidents are increasing in more than 7% year over year. And on average, we have 45, again, 45 non-human identities for every user, growing at least at almost two and a half times per person per year. Now, I can't really see you with all the light here, but if I look around here, I think we might just need a bigger room next year if we count our machine identities as well. Until now, I've shared with you some data. Let's talk about the challenges. 2024 is the biggest election year in history with over 50 countries expected to hold national elections. More than 4 billion people are expected to cast their votes. If cyber election disruptions are successful, we could see more of that going forward. In addition to influence operations, we might also see a few cyber attacks that include accessing voter registration databases or manipulating tabulation and web pages. Elections can bring a huge, huge leadership change for a country and have been targeted for the last decade. The differences for elections attacks in the future include ongoing political tensions, evolving technologies, and the ever-present risk of misinformation and disinformation that can sway election outcomes. You don't need me to take you back to 2016. You can see what has already started for this year. This is not theoretical, it is happening. Security for these elections is crit critical. And depending on the outcomes, this year's election results might shape the way we perceive security of cyberspace in the future. 
bad actors can ruin cyberspace for the rest of us, which is exactly why regulations are so important. Regulation can be impactful and constructive. However, too much of it can prevent the good guys from countering the bad guys, and the bad guys don't need to comply with regulations. The US issued an executive order on AI just last year, and the EU introduced the AI Act that enforces best practices and regulatory frameworks. And after more than two years, the Cyber Incident Reporting for Critical Infrastructure Act was re just recently published for comments. It makes us think about the future, what new technology will be advancing that we need to take care of today? Now, attack methods have advanced, but so have the players who deploy them. Cyber criminals are using zero days, and nation state actors are stealing credentials. Nation state actors also attack Western companies, while cyber criminal syndicates target critical infrastructure. A decade ago, it was exactly the opposite. I don't need to, I'm sure the audience here is familiar with this, the latest Vault Typhoon attack and the APT29 breach. My key takeaway of it is that the impact is significant regardless of the attacker. And after critical infrastructure attack, it makes me think, what's next? Perhaps it's us. Biometric breaches are top of mind when protecting identities. The 23andMe breach is an excellent example of breaches involving personal information being sold on the dark web. We continue to see a rise in these breaches and identity is part of this. You can change your password, but can you change your DNA if it is compromised? The future is now and using fingerprints or eyeball scanning for multi-touch authentication might just not be enough anymore as attackers continue to think of innovative way to breach biometric systems. I asked the AGNAI tool I'm using to create an image of itself and that's what came out. So bear with me a little bit. GenAI is shaping the future of humanity and cyberspace. It's an exciting time to harness the AI's potential for, to advance productivity and innovation. But bad actors also utilize it for their malicious needs. It's an important revolution within our lifetime that impacts so many aspects of them, some of them beyond our, our comprehensive. And uh, we also not always can anticipate what comes next. So it's not good or bad, you can we can harness it for either, and we're already seeing this today. Let's have a short demo. Cyber Arc Labs research aim to see if AI can attack AI by creating an automated platform based on the Gen AI model that will attack other models. We call it Fuzzy AI. Let's have a look. This is an automatic jailbreak generation system the team created for research purposes only. It supports most common LLM models such as ChatGPT and Gemini. It supports several different jailbreak attack techniques. Let's see how the system can jailbreak ChatGPT to receive instruction on how to build a bomb. We choose what models to jailbreak and the harmful bomb instruction prompt. First, the system runs the prompt without jailbreak manipulation to receive the naive, I can't help with that answer. Now the system uses the different jailbreak attack techniques to force JGPT to give us the desired answer. After a few minutes, we can see that seven attack techniques were successful. The most successful attack is then displayed with bomb destruction. Success. The research demonstrated that the attack surface and security controls we currently have must adapt as Gen AI applications become more common and as we all trust them more. Now, despite all the stories I've talked about thus far, I am optimistic. I am. Why? Primarily because of two reasons. One is capacity. 
the big guys have more talent and resources than the bad guys. It's as simple as that. And the second one is urgency. Humankind has proven repeatedly that it can collaborate and innovate in the, in the face of grave danger. My personal belief is that urgency to act has become mainstream and can already be shown in nation's action. If we all walk toward a better future, we'll get there together. The person are that's in this room and beyond. How, you might ask? I'll give you three ways. First of all, we need to secure all digital identities in the broader way possible, not just the password and the credential, but also the biometric data and our own videos online. Next, we need just enough regulation with the right architecture and the right framework. And last, but not least, we need to combine both the private and the public sector capabilities. By combining those, we are better able to mitigate attackers. And I can already see great examples for that in Ukraine and here in Israel. If we do all these things right, I believe we can get to cyberspace where we would love to live in. This one. Thank you all for having me today. Enjoy the rest of the program.